Hey everyone, I'm here with David Wright again. David is a personal trainer at Fitness for 10 in Carson City. He's in our studio there in uh, Carson City Fitness for 10. Thanks for being with us, David. Thanks for having me, Steve. You know, so we're going to talk about what happens so often. People start exercising. It's going to happen to everybody. They hit a plateau. They get stuck. You know, when, you, when you're a beginner and you first start exercising, it doesn't matter what your age is, if you're 20 or, with, or whether you're 75. You start exercising when you're 75 and it's the first time you've ever done anything like this, you're going to get great results. You're going to see progress. But sooner or later, you've got to adjust to the plateau that you will hit. So what are your first thoughts on this? Yeah, Steve, that's that's absolutely right. So, you know, beginners to exercise, whether it's gym or elsewhere, you know, you're going to really see a lot of, uh, as, uh, you know, some people will call it, you know, newbie gains, etc. you know, just seeing a really good results, because, you know, it's something completely new for your body to, to understand and to start adapting to. And so there's a lot of great changes that happen. But eventually, to your point, you know, you do reach a kind of a plateau, and it's different amounts of time for everybody. But, you know, I, I've seen that a lot. I've personally had that happen to me many times over the last, gosh, like 12 years that I've, you know, been in the gym and doing workouts, competing, different things like that. So there's always kind of a, a plateau level, regardless of what level of, you know, athlete that you are, whether you're a bodybuilder or you're somebody completely new to the gym, you're going to run into that um, on occasion. And so, you know, it's always good to not be discouraged at that point. You know, there's there's things we can do about that. Yeah. And you're going to have your ups and downs just like the stock market. But you want to keep it going in a positive direction. And, you know, the obvious answer is, well, there's some not so obvious answers and there's some very obvious answers, things that you can easily do. The first thing is you have to change your exercise program. Of course, if you're doing the mm -hmm. same thing for six months for a, or for a year, you're going to hit a plateau. You have to change the exercises that you're doing. You have to change the movements. And when you do that, you're going to start to feel that workout again because your muscles, your body has gotten so conditioned and used to what you're doing. I'll use a simple, simple example, and I could do this with a whole bunch of different exercises, deadlifts. If you're doing conventional deadlift, Switch to a sumo deadlift and see what happens. You're going to feel it completely different. You're still doing a deadlift, but you're doing a different style. So that's one example. What are some of the things you do with your clients or with you, with yourself, when you feel yourself hitting a plateau? Yeah, so a lot of times with, with my clients, um, my general way of, of training uh, at this point is really kind of keeping it different to an extent on every session that we do. And when I say that, it's not necessarily always different exercises, but we're never going to do the same exact thing every session or even every other session. You know, I try to keep a really good mix in there. Number one, it keeps people motivated and wants, you know, because it's going to be something different and challenge them in different ways. But for myself, you know, especially right now uh, in show prep, there's a lot of different things that um, I'm focusing on, but when, you know, I'm, whether I'm in show prep or not, one of the things that's really important to me is really changing up the different things. So like you said, deadlifts for great example, um, you know, that's one of the things, change up the style of deadlift, or, you know, if you're doing a lot of, I don't know, incline bench press, for example, you know, to build that upper chest musculature, well, maybe you need to start doing, you know, more flat or incorporating different things. So what I'll tend to do is, you know, I won't stay on a specific workout plan. And when I say that, um, you know, I'm talking about, let's say it's a chest day, I go in and do the exact same things, exact same order, maybe heavier, maybe lighter, more reps, whatever, but it's the same exercises. So your body, you know, that the muscle memory, your body gets really used to all those same exercises. So eventually it's like, wow, I'm not really feeling it. And it doesn't feel like, you know, I'm really seeing any progress there. It's because your body is so used to it. So what I do uh, before I get to that point is I will generally do variations of different things, whether it's, 
in a flat bench, an incline bench, you know, different chest exercises. Maybe I don't do any barbell bench press, you know, one, you know, workout day for chest that I do um, and stick to other different exercises. Cause there's more than one way. Of course, there's multiple dozens, hundreds, sometimes depending on what the exercise is to, to build or strengthen those particular muscle areas. So you really just have to keep kind of changing it up. Does that mean every single day that you exercise has to be completely different? No. But what it does mean is you don't want to stay doing those same exercises over and over and, and kind of expecting those changes that you saw at the beginning to continue because to your point, your body gets used to it. So then it's no longer as challenging to those muscles. So you have to change it up. Right. Your body gets conditioned to move, mm -hmm. to, to make that movement. You know, the other thing you can switch to dumbbells, switch to a barbell, yep. use machines for a while. And so those are all things that you can do, but you can also change your intensity level. You can change your sets, change your repetition. If you're doing six to 10 reps, you can change it up and do 15 reps because you can change your rest in between periods, uh, in between sets. All of these things are going to make a difference. If you maybe go a little lighter, maybe you take, a little less rest or a little more rest and you do more repetitions, all these combinations can be uh, changed to give you a variance where you can actually continue to stimulate your body. Last thing that's, this is more subtle, but you get, you hit a plateau. You, you, maybe you're trying to lose weight. Maybe you're trying to gain weight, your diet, you need, you need to change your diet. Because your body's going to get used to everything. Maybe you need to increase your calories. Maybe you need to increase your or increase or decrease your carbohydrates. Maybe you need to increase or decrease your protein. Um, maybe you need to change your meal plan a little bit because maybe and and you do this all the time because right now you're getting cut, you're getting shredded for a contest. You have to modify your diet week by week when you get down this close to a show. Um, but somebody might be trying to gain weight. Maybe they're trying to gain muscle. Maybe they need to eat more protein. So that's a little more subtle. It's outside of the gym, but your diet's a big deal. So what kind of modifications would you maybe recommend sometimes when people are trying to get over a plateau when you have to move to their diet and look at that? Yeah, I mean, diet is definitely important. And so a lot of times with certain clients, great example is, you know, I have some clients who are trying to gain weight. A lot of people think people come to the gym to lose weight uh, and get in shape, but there's a great deal who also come to gain that muscle mass, to gain more body weight. Um, and I have, I have those clients, a couple of them actually. And one of the things that I look at, and again, this is whether you're trying to lose or gain, when you hit that plateau, you look at, okay, what are, what are my eating today? What does my eating look like? A lot of times what I'll go over with clients is we'll look, you know, what has your eating been like? Has it been pretty uh, consistent with what we originally talked about when we started? And if it has, okay, let's change up kind of to your point. Let's look at, you know, your carbohydrates as a great example. Like what carbohydrates are you eating? Okay, let's talk about maybe changing those to a lower amount, or sometimes depending on the goal, maybe we need to raise them up. Maybe you're not eating nearly enough to help uh, with what you're trying to do. So really looking at the carbohydrates, but one of the other parts is, and we've talked about this before is, you know, what, how much protein are you, are you taking in? So that's, that's a whole video by itself, but you know, protein is super important. So I always look at that and that tends to be the key. A lot of times is, you know, that protein amount, a lot of times is not adequate for what the goal is that they're trying to achieve, which is different for everyone. But we want to make sure that for gaining weight, losing weight doesn't matter. We want to maintain or grow that muscle so that you can gain weight so that you can lose weight. A lot of people kind of tend to say, well, if I want to do this, I need to eat less food or I need to do this. So I need to eat more food. Well, it's, it's not about the how much food you need to eat. It's about how many calories, macronutrients that you need. So, for instance, I eat six times a day right now. People go, oh, my gosh, aren't you trying to cut down and lean out and all those different things? Absolutely. And that's one of the keys to doing it is, 
is having these meals set out. Now, does everybody need to eat six times a day? Absolutely not. But that's one of the things we look at as a trainer is, what does your diet look like? Let's try to help you get past this plateau because if you're eating the same thing, working out, doing the same things, you're gonna eventually start stalling and getting to that plateau. So when we change up that food, even just an adjustment in the carbohydrates, you know, that's gonna be a change. Or when you're in the gym, you know, to your point, switching up different exercises. And it doesn't mean you have to do hundreds of different ones and have to be this book of knowledge of everything that you can do in a gym. But even if, you know, you rotate different exercises that you do or do them in different mm -hmm. orders and different reps and sets and all those things that you talked about, those will all help. So those two things together will really help kind of break through that plateau. Yeah. And um, everyone's different. You're just eating six meals a day. Right now, just so you all know, David is a metabolic machine right now. Now, for him to eat six meals a day is totally different than for me to eat six meals a day. For me to eat six meals a day would be an absolute disaster. But when I was playing college football, when I was competing back in my early 20s, um, I ate at least that and a lot of calories but everyone's difference. What's your body composition? What's your metabolic health? You know, that'll tell you how many carbohydrates and all that to eat, but you got to figure it out. Um, and it helps to have a good coach. And I, I just think, you know, one of the simple things to check right away, and this is the last thing I'll say, is that your protein, no matter who you are and no matter what your goals are, that's the first thing you need to check because it's probably too low. There's a lot of people that would argue with me. There's a lot of doctors that would argue with me. Oh, proteins. No, your body needs the amino acids that are in proteins. And you need to get a full spectrum of all the essential amino acids. That's really, really important. You can do it on a plant-based diet, but it's not easy. We've talked about it many times, but that would be the first thing that I would check. And that is, I'm going to try bumping up my protein and see what kind of results I get. Yeah, I would, I would second all of that, Steve. I think protein is really that, that building block, the key to a lot of that. And a lot of us, uh, you know, who are not used to counting macronutrients and stuff, there's a lot of deficits in the protein area. So it's definitely the best, best thing to start with. Okay, David. So if people want to follow you on social media, see where you are with your competitions and all that, how do they follow you on um, social media? So I have two social media pages. So they can follow me on Instagram at David Wright underscore fitness. That's where I have all of my transformation photos, uh, contest prep, updates, all those types of things. And then I have my personal training page at Right Fitness Training on Instagram. Okay, David, thanks for being with us. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks, Steve.